Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. Your benefit of the course is you will get basic understanding of the principle of the electrical grid, its tasks and I will give you typical solutions as state of the art. So this course is not meant as an engineering course. And also for today important, the pictures are arranged as a collage, so they are taken from different sides. To understand the electrical grid, there are two focus lines. Focus line number one is energy as a global quantity. Focus line number two is power as a local quantity. And for the sake of completion, I give you a full content of this course. And today we concentrate on apparatus hardware for network tasks. And now let's get started. The electric grid consists basically of generation, transportation, distribution and us, this is the users of the electricity. And today I want to give you some insight into generation and transportation or distribution. So we start with generation. So there are different ways how to transform primary energy into electrical energy and electrical power. And here I give you a certain selection of power plants. And we start with a hydropower plant. In a hydropower plant, the water comes from an upper basin, runs through the turbine, which drives the generator, and then the energy is transformed into electrical energy. And the first step here is the dam, behind which the water is stored. This water goes down through pressure pipelines into the turbine house, where it goes into the turbine, in blue on my right side, and this turns again the generator in green. And once it has been transformed into electrical power, it goes through the switch gear. And from the switch gear, as you can maybe see, it's a little bit faint. You can see this electrical energy goes through the overhead lines to the customers. So, by the way, this is the Aswan storage tram. Another type of plant is hydropower plants, run of river plants. So, this is the river power plants. So, we have a river which is harnessed by a dam. From the dam, the water is brought into the turbine house. Here you can see such a turbine, which is driven by the running water. And again, this turbine causes the generator to spin. And again, from there, the electrical power is brought out through the switch gear and from the switch gear to the network and is brought to us, to the users. So, just to make sure that you have seen a hydropower generator as a whole, these are two types, an older one, a younger one of hydropower plant generators. So, the next type of power plant I want to show you is the steam power plant. Maybe you can remember from one of my previous courses about electrical power generation. A steam power plant works by heating water in a boiler, making steam off of it, putting this to the turbine, which turns the generator, and then it is brought back into the form of water in the condenser. And now I show you these single steps. You will be astonished that I show you a normal oven. But what I want to make sure is, you see there is a fire and outside of the fire you have pipes. And these pipes are welded together, they form something like a wall, which for a real power plant is shown here. You see, this brown piece of the wall of a boiler is made of, of single pipes. On one side there is the hot flame that pushes against this wall and inside there is the water that is caused to heat up and to produce steam. So this steam goes up, by the way producing also exhaust waste fumes through the chimney, and then it goes through the turbine. This is a turbine which rotates and drives the generator. When the steam comes out of the turbine, it is condensed back into water, which is in this condenser. You see here, the essential part of the condenser are pipes, which are filled with cold water, which makes the steam turn into little droplets of water, and then they are brought back into the water circuit. And while it does so, it generates power, electrical power, in this turbine. So, the next type is the gas power plant. A gas power plant works more or less like a gas turbine in an aeroplane. So think we fly into the holidays, there are two gas turbines that drive us. So you see here there's the suction, the inlet, where the air is sucked in, it is compressed. 
From then it goes into the combustion chamber where fuel is injected. It starts to burn and pushes out through the turbine by driving this. So what you have seen here, this is a real gas turbine, full size. And when it goes out, it has a large exhaust pipe, so to say. And while it does so, it drives the generator and produces electrical energy. Next is a wind power plant. The wind power plant works by a rotor that is driven by the air and this motion is transformed via a gearbox and drives a generator. So here you can see what normally is hidden from our eyes. This is what is inside this machine compartment. You can see the gearbox and also the generator and they all fit into this machine compartment, which is also called nacelle. The last power conversion mechanism in our course, which is selected by me, is the photovoltaic plant. So here we can see a small size photovoltaic plant on a private house. And from the DC current, which is produced on the roof, it goes through this inverter or converter, and this makes AC current. But also you can stack these together and for example I show you here to my right side there's a 2 gigawatt plant and if you look carefully the energy that is produced is brought away by 700 kV lines. So when we talk about lines I would show you what overhead lines look like. So this one here is a 400 kV overhead line. You can see it's a high tower with long insulators but high up. This is an overhead line and over a tower for 110 kV, this is called high voltage. Then there is something for medium voltage, like 20 kV. And also there's a piece of an overhead line for 400 volt, low voltage overhead line. And now if you compare the size of the insulators, they go down with falling voltage from 400 kV to 110 to 20 to 0.4 kV, which is 400 volts. And there is a very rough rule by which you can decide when you see an overhead line, what is the nominal voltage of the system. The rough rule is 100 centimeters, as length of the insulators, corresponds to 100 kV system voltage. So if you have a long, long insulator, it most likely is 400 kV. If it is something like this, it's medium voltage, like 20 kV, 11 kV, 30 kV. And if it's a small insulator, it's low voltage, 400 volts. Here I show you something that you never can see from close up. It's the cables of overhead lines. And you know, never touch an overhead line cable, even if it's lying on the ground, it's deadly. So now see, there is a 500 kV, 230 kV and 110 kV cable. And more or less, you can put your hand around it. And this means they have a diameter of something like 3 centimeters, 30 millimeters. The explanation is given in another course. It's due to the penetration depth of the electric AC current, which never goes deeper, measured from the outside of a cable, than something like one centimeter. So therefore, it's no use to make thicker cables. You waste copper and aluminum because no current flows in the center part. The 110 kV overhead line cable is shown in two different forms. One is the classic overhead line cable, which has a steel core. That's the little stick that comes out. These are the steel wires that keep it from falling down and from rupturing. And in very modern overhead line cable constructions, you have instead of the steel core, which is heavy and which is susceptible to extension by warming, you have a carbon fiber core, which is lightweight and which does not extend when the cable gets warm. So this is more adapt for higher current densities and higher warming. So last to show this 100 centimeter is 100 kV rule. So the 110 kV line has something like one meter and a little bit of insulator length, 20 kV or medium voltage kV is smaller. And for 400 volts, it's only a few centimeters. So now we come to another component to transport electricity that is the cables. I start with the 400 kV cable. You see the core is made out of aluminum. It's silver color. And around it, we have this whitish material, which is plastic. This is the insulation. And around it, you see another white ring. This is a tube in which these materials are contained. And this is also a mechanical protection. The next one is a 110 kV cable. So you see, 
The conducting material is copper. It's this golden color. Around it, we have the insulation material, which in this case is not the whitish plastic, but it is oil drenched paper. That was the way how in former times they made the insulation by wrapping paper and wrapping and wrapping around the conductor and then to drench it with oil as an insulation material. And this is the insulation. And again, outside you see the silverish ring, which is again the outer cladding of this cable. Next cable is 20 kV. Here it is dismantled. Again, we see the aluminum core in silver color, the whitish plastic insulation around it. And then if you look carefully, you see these little strands of copper. This is like a mesh. We call it the sheath of the cable. This is not only for mechanical protection, but also to conduct ground currents in a safe way. Last but not least, I show you low voltage cabling in a form that you never see in real life. Here you see a low voltage cable network consisting of these cables that go to a junction box and come out of this junction box. And you see these will be later taken down into the ground covered with earth and then you never can see what you see here. It's a part of an electric low voltage grid made up of low voltage cabling. So the next element in transportation distribution is transformers. Transformers again can be made for very high voltage like 400 kV bring it down to 110 kV. As you can see from these long insulators, remember 100 centimeters is 100 kV. These are really very long, so you can see it is very high voltage. So the next picture is about the 110 to 20 kV transformer, which is high voltage to medium voltage. This transformer has been photographed from two sides. On the left picture, you see the 110 kV insulators. Remember, 110 kV corresponds to roughly 100 centimeters of insulator length. And on the right side, which you virtually cannot see because it's so small, it's just the medium voltage size. And from here, the voltage and the current goes out through medium voltage cables. These are the three black strands of cables on the right side. And now from medium voltage, the voltage has to be transformed to the household voltage, which in many countries is 400 volts, 0.4 kV. Here is a transformer dismantled, so it was cut open to see what is inside such a transformer. What we can see here are the coils where the voltage is induced and also the iron core where the magnetic field is brought from one coil to the other. And on the low voltage side, again, we have high currents. For example, watch this cast resin transformer to my right side. The high voltage side is relatively thin cables, long insulators, and the low voltage side is low voltage cables, thick cables with small insulators. So this is a typical household transformer. And when we speak about transformer, we must mention the substations. Substations are central points where the electricity comes from all sides and is distributed again to the users. So here is a 400 kV substation. You see again, long insulators. Then we have a 132 kV substation where you can see the overhead lines, transformers, the bus bus and everything. And what might be interesting, what you have seen more easily is a so-called pole station. This is a transformer from 20 kV to 0.4 kV mounted on a pole. And this is a small substation because when you look at the top above the transformers, you see three white areas. These are the so-called insulation switches to switch it on and off. Now, if there are heavy and adverse weather conditions, such a transformer is put into a housing. You see the round circle means where is the transformer? And in this station, it is hidden because it is behind the walls. And you see the voltage, 400 volts comes out in form of low voltage overhead lines. And when you see why is it low voltage, you see, look at the length of the insulators. It's small. It's not 30 centimeters or 20 centimeters. It's smaller, so it's 400 volts. And now if you have in densely populated areas, the so-called secondary transformer substations, the transformer is hidden in this building. You cannot see it. And this is to keep people away and also animals away from everything electrical. So inside 
is the same as to my left side. It is a transformer and some type of switchgear. So this was today's lecture about apparatus and hardware for network tasks. Please stay tuned to my channel and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much. Bye bye.